One of the cool features on commercial battery boxes and power stations is a nice display to let you know exactly how much capacity you have in the battery. This is Dave of the Shop. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to add a battery monitor to your project. So let's start by understanding what a battery monitor is. So this particular unit, the uh, Drock unit, and main components for it are, there's the display unit that uh, gives you all the indications on it. On the back of that is a little plug-in for a cable. Then you've got what they call the power shunt. And this goes basically in line on your uh, main wire for your battery uh, so that the battery's connected to one side, the load, uh, whatever's drawing power from the battery, or the charger, whatever's putting power back in the battery, goes through this little uh, very low, low ohm uh, resistor. And then there's a cable, and that cable will plug in uh, to the shunt, and then that cable then goes to the cable goes to the screen. So that's what connects them together. So the shunt is uh, measuring the current, and the display uh, shows the current that's going in or out of the battery, and it does some nice calculations. So it'll ultimately, it'll give you what percentage of charge is left in your battery. It'll calculate based on the current uh, load that you have, how long the battery will last. In addition to the shunt and the display, there's also a wire that'll go to the positive lead. So since the shunt connects to the negative side of the battery, and then to power the screen, we need to uh, complete the connection. So there's a little place to hook up the wire, and that wire will then go over to the battery, and that'll provide the 12 volts to run the, the display and the little microcontroller that's inside of this. What we'll do is we'll make a new top for the box with a cutout that this display just plugs right into. And for this Drock controller, there is a nice little wiring diagram that shows how it is to be wired up. And then, of course, you've got to do some configuration. And so there's a nice uh, set of instructions to explain step-by-step step what, what to set on it. You only really have to set a couple of things. You have to tell it uh, what the state of the charge is. So the recommended way to do this is set up your charger on the battery, fully charge the battery so that you're going to start at 100%. <clears throat> and then you'll also enter in the amp hour capacity of the battery. Um, so with those things programmed into the controller, configured into the controller, and then the measurements that it's, that it's going to make, it can then give you the state of the battery. And essentially what this thing is going to do is it, it's, it's tabulating. It's, it's adding up when you started off at the 100% uh, charge state, then it's going to accumulate how much you discharge it. So as you plug things in, you know, we charge up a couple of phones and an iPad, run other devices on it. It's going to measure the amount of current that's being pulled and tabulate a total on that that's used then to display uh, the percentage remaining on it. And when you plug in a charger that is essentially a reverse measurement, you've got current, you've got capacity going back in and it'll add that back up. So if you charge the battery up and if everything is configured properly, you charge it all up, the meter will show 100%. If you were to run it all the way down, 
It should go to 0%. Show you any state in between. Another important thing to understand about shunts is they do come in different sizes or different current handling capacities. The one on the left is the one that we're working with on this project, and it's designed to handle current up to 100 amps. The one on the right is designed to handle current for 350 amps. So it's important to size, correctly size, the size of the shunt uh, for the size of the battery project that you're working on. For instance, the one on the left would be good for you know, 25 amp hour, 50 amp hour, 100 amp hour, provided that you're not planning on pulling more than 100 amps. The one on the right, the 350 amp unit, I will use that for a big uh, 200 amp battery project. So what we saw in our previous uh, setup for the basic battery uh, box power wiring, that had our positive connections, two wires, one that went to the power pole and USB charger, and then we had our three ground wires uh, for those devices. So the way that the shunt will work, let's just pull this cable apart. Essentially, it's designed to go onto the negative side of the battery and in fact labeled on it is battery negative so what we'll end up doing is we'll mount this to the battery and then we'll take these negative wires and move them over to the load side of this that way now any current that is supplied uh, to the ports on the um, on the power station, well then that, that current's gonna be measured uh, with this device. Now, it's not gonna fit on there um, just by itself. We can take this bolt out, um, but it, it, it touches this, this is gonna hit and not, and not work. So what we need to do is shim it up. So I have some seven eighths by one quarter inch brass bar stock. And I'm essentially going to make a shim, so I'll cut a little piece to, to uh, mirror this brass end on it, then drill a hole, and then we'll use a longer screw to go through here and mount this to the battery. Then our negative terminals will mount right up on that, and that'll fit inside the box very nicely. And here's the finished shim cut from the quarter inch stock. Now the next step is going to be to add our 12 volt positive wire. This is going to be the wire that provides the positive power to run the screen. I made up this wire earlier. Uh, it has an inline fuse on it and then a ring connector that will mount up to the battery. So now I just need to make sure that it's connected to the positive port on the shunt and then that part's ready to go. Now it's time to mount the shunt to the battery. So we'll start by putting the shim on. And you can see the shunt, I've removed the bolts out of it. And I'll use the longer screw with a washer on it to mount the shunt to the negative terminal on the battery. We'll tighten that down 
And then uh, that's nice snug fit, but there's a problem. Uh, I forgot to put the bolt in. So let's loosen it. We can just twist it around and slide in our brass bolt. Slide it back into position and tighten it down. Now the next step is to mount our negative wires uh, to the shunt and as we saw before there were three wires well two of those wires are for the USB charger so I've just crimped those together on a larger ring that'll fit onto the bolt um, so then I've got one ring for the USB charger and one ring for the power pole. We'll put those on the shunt and put our nut on uh, and then tighten that down. Now the next step is to connect up the ribbon cable that goes between the screen and the shunt. And then the last step is to connect up the 12 volt positive wire to the battery which will apply. This will provide the 12 volt positive power needed to run the battery monitor in its screen. Now with everything hooked up, we can press the uh, OK button on the screen and it should light up and it does. Now the next step is to do a little bit of configuration to the screen. So we've got a couple of values that we want to set. Uh, one that I have already set was I changed the brightness on the screen uh, to set it to its maximum brightness to make it easy to see. Now what we've got to do is set the battery level and this is the amp hour capacity for the battery. So what I need to do is set that to 25 amp hours. Now using the buttons, the um, arrow buttons on the screen, then you it'll let you step through each column on the number. So I'll set that to... 25.0 amp hour. Now the next thing that I have to set in the controller is the charge state. So I've previously charged the battery so I know it's at a hundred percent. So then I will set this unit to a hundred percent and then that gives me everything I need. So you can see it comes up showing 25 amp hours and now it shows 100% on the battery. So now let's do a simple test. Uh, I've got my meter showing zero current, nothing is plugged in. I've got this little small LED light strip. I plug it in and you can see it says that it's 0.19 amps. It has a minus sign on it. That means power is going out of the battery. It also gives us an estimate of how much time uh, is left in the battery running at this load. And it shows 99.59 hours, which is exactly what I would expect. Now I've already put my battery and all my connectors, everything's back in the box. So using the same top, uh, Infusion 360, I cut a hole uh, ex and extruded that out. So this allows the meter, the panel, to just snap in place into the hole. And after connecting the wire, it powers up and I see my reading 25 amp hours at 100%. Next, I snap the top back into place and then I just need to put the four screws back in. 
All right, once that's done, then that completes this project. If you enjoyed this kind of project, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. That'll help uh, me understand what kinds of videos to do and help this get out for other people to see. I greatly would appreciate that if you would take a moment and do it. This is Dave in the shop. Thanks for watching.